You are listening to CMDA Matters, the weekly podcast of the Christian Medical and Dental Associations. I'm your host, Dr. Mike Chupp, and it is an incredible privilege to be CEO, sometimes I say the chief exhortation officer of this 90-year-old organization where we care deeply about changing hearts within healthcare. You know, when I started practice in the summer of 1993 in Southwest Michigan, with a multi-specialty physician group of over 40 followers of Christ, I was very excited and challenged to find other Christian physicians and many of their clinic staff who were seasoned veterans. They showed me how to incorporate spiritual ministry with healthcare. And then just two years later, CMDA partnered with Dr. Walt Larimore and Reverend Bill Peel to produce the very first training curriculum called The Saline Solution. And that was taught in seminars in cities across the country. My guest today is a dentist who not only attended the very first in-person Saline Solution sponsored by CMDA, but he also attended the very first Grace Prescriptions course, which was the second generation curriculum also taught by Dr. Walt Larimore and Bill Peel around 2014. Dr. Bill Griffin is our Vice President for Dental Ministry, and he joins me today as he has played a vital role in producing now a third-generation training course with an incredible cast of faculty and presenters. I invite you to listen in to my recent conversation with Dr. Griff as we prepare for the premiere of this video teaching series at our upcoming national convention on Saturday, May 1st. Well, today my guest on CMDA Matters is Dr. Bill Griffin, uh, who's been a CMDA member for almost four decades. He's currently been with us at CMDA in his third year, serving as our Vice President for Dental Ministries. Came alongside Dr. Jeff Amstutz, who's the Vice President for Dental Education, and uh, Griff, as we call him around here is a graduate of the University of Notre Dame and received his DDS degree from Virginia Commonwealth University School of Dentistry. In addition to a very long and distinguished private practice career, Dr. Griffin has been caring for dentally needy patients, both here in the U.S. as well as overseas on a gazillion, okay, 60, not quite a gazillion, but 60 dental mission trips, and also was dental director and board chairman for the Lackey Clinic in Yorktown, Virginia. His career in healthcare has led him to discover strong ties between both physical health, especially in the, in the mouth, and spiritual health over many years. He actually came to understand and hear about the very first CMDA teaching program called The Saline Solution, and after that, a program called Grace Prescriptions, and uh, was there at the very first Saline Solution back, I believe, in 1995. So over the past year, Griff, you've been working on a new 3.0 version of these highly popular programs that started in the 90s that I got excited about too in the 90s. And uh, we're calling the new 3.0 Faith Prescriptions. And you're planning on unveiling that for our membership in the National Convention. So welcome to CMDA Matters. And I can't wait for you to explain to our listeners what's involved in Faith Prescriptions. It's been a tremendous project. I'm very enthusiastic about it. So Griff, when I when I just think of you, I don't know how many of our listeners have gotten to know you yet. Certainly our dental members uh, have gotten to know you quite well and have known you over the years. But when I think of you, a verse just jumps off the page from Romans 12. Never be lacking in zeal, Paul told the Roman Christians, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord because you are a doc who's so full of energy and excitement and joy. And that has been rubbing off on us here at CMDA. Well, it's God's grace. Thank you, Mike. So you were there in the beginning, Sailing Solution. I remember the notices as well. I had just started practice. And the first conference back in October of 1995, what made you want to attend and what did you leave that conference with? When I was in dental school was when my faith in Christ really became personal. 
And uh, it was a powerful experience of seeing Christ's love in a real way. And I remember graduating from dental school and thinking, now that I've been entrusted with this amazing gospel, how can I spend my life working on teeth? There was this false dichotomy in my mind. I think they call it an either-or fallacy that we do either one or the other. And I very much wanted to see integration of the gospel with my practice, with seeing patients. But my attempts were pretty infrequent and pretty awkward at times. And when I got the notice about this first saline solution conference, uh, I just, I had to be there. It just, it hit right away. Uh, my wife, Linda, and I, along with a dentist friend from Virginia Beach, we made the seven hour trip down to Asheville, North Carolina. There are about 180 of us at that conference. And it really did so much to connect who I was in Christ with who I was as a dentist. So what were some specific highlights that you took out from that conference? We both come to know and to love Dr. Walt Laramore, as well as uh, Reverend Bill Peel, uh, who were the pillars of both Saline Solution and Grace Prescriptions. What were highlights that jumped out? You said, now I'm equipped. This is great. One that comes to mind is a chart that was included in the program called Micro Decisions of Faith. And it showed that not a lot of people go instantaneously from being a hardened atheist to a committed Christian, but in almost everybody's life, there are steps along the way. And so my calling as a Christian is not necessarily to immediately transfer someone from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, but to point them to Christ in a way that might move them closer. So in other words, If a hardened atheist comes into my office who's convinced that all Christians are idiots and I can treat him well and he recognizes something different, he might leave the office thinking, well, maybe not all Christians are idiots, and that's progress. And so it changed my expectations for what I hope spiritual interventions would accomplish. Uh, A second thing certainly was the ability to casually, naturally communicate various aspects of faith through things like faith flags, faith stories, in ways where you could mention spiritual elements that are important to you without requiring a response, without being conversation stoppers in a natural way. And a third thing and a critical thing is that these spiritual interventions are very acceptable and very desired by patients as long as you're remembering that you want to get permission and have sensitivity towards those patients and also respect their beliefs at the same time. So ultimately, it freed me up to be who I am in Christ. Well, let's segue. We both have had a chance to receive blessings and encouragement from Walt Laramore and Bill Peel in this process of the version 3.8. Oh, and it wasn't that long ago Grace Prescriptions came out, maybe seven, eight, nine years ago. But obviously, that's a long period of time when it comes to technology and the way you present media. So talk to us about how is this new faith prescriptions going to compare to the past Grace Prescriptions? Well, there are certainly going to be some similarities that uh, veterans of the prior programs will recognize. Many of the basic teachings, we are retaining those, and I'm glad. And in fact, this new program in no way replaces what came before. But some of the differences we think are important. One is the various videos, many of those will extend into areas not previously addressed, various specialty areas, things like good news for addiction treatment, end-of-life care, treatment for depression, treating refugees and immigrants. There'll also be a special episode for medical and dental students. So it'll be a, a, a broader spectrum of topics. And each video will be about 15 minutes long, which is a great length for groups to get together. And then each video will also include discussion questions to launch those who participate into considerations of how what they've studied applies to patients they're seeing that week. And the laser-like focus, uh, Griff, 
is uh, obviously there are a lot of things you could talk about in taking care of refugees, for example. And yet, this teaching series is about how to do effectively do whole person spiritual care among that population. Yes, that's the common factor in all of the sessions, yes. So how did you find speakers? I mean, over 20 different videos. Uh, how, many, how many did it reach? 24, 23, 22? At this point, we're at 24, and we may very well add more in the future since it's a streaming delivery system. So how did you identify speakers in these various uh, subject areas, people who had practiced and had developed some facility in doing that kind of ministry am among various groups of patients? Well, the first thing I did was to check with uh, campus and community ministries for regional directors, Grant Hewitt, Alan Harmer, Michael McLaughlin, and Tom Grosh. They oversee campus and community ministry in each of the four regions in the country, and they gave me some, some great contacts, some people I could follow up on. I also uh, spoke with Walt Laramore. He had some good suggestions as well. And then there are other contacts that I made through uh, – almost freaky circumstances, things I never could have expected, God moments, if you will. I'm talking to a dentist in Milwaukee about needing someone to speak into the academic medicine realm, and he gives me a great recommendation who's in Temple, Texas. I'm speaking to a friend from Richmond, and he gives me a great recommendation on somebody to do the international good news uh, episode. So it's just, it was very cool to see how God worked through that. And, and when I got stuck, I would meander down to the office of our CEO, who's a pretty connected guy. And he had a few great recommendations as well. Honestly, when you would check with me, sometimes I would have received an email literally the day of or the day before that put somebody on my radar. That happened a couple of times, certainly in the process. Mm -hmm. Well, you've been traveling a lot. You've gotten to meet people that you've uh, – and be in places where you've never been before. And you've been – I know because I had a chance to participate and uh, talk about praying with patients, which is really something I – right down the center of the plate for me in terms of spiritual ministry. And, you know, you gave feedback and input to the various speakers and, and with Reliance Studios, whom we contracted to help us produce – faith prescriptions. Tell me about your time with speakers and what you learned from speakers while this was being produced. Well, we decided early on in the development of this program to record all of the main speakers live, which was what required all the travel. And we ended up with 19 speakers from 12 different states, which gave me a chance to tour the country and, and see how on one hand, how different the speakers were. Some were introverts, some were extroverts. They represented various ethnicities. But what they had in common was even, even more pressure. They all had a self-conscious desire to see this Christ who had saved them manifested in their patient care. And it was just beautiful to see what they had in common. I, I think about uh, John chapter 17 that talks where Jesus prays for the unity of his people. And this group of, of speakers, many of whom had not met each other, were yet so unified in that central desire to raise Christ up. I remember some of the sacrifices that these speakers made, like we were in Temple, Texas, and uh, Dr. Jonathan Chai was doing a session on sharing the gospel through academic circles. And he's an ophthalmologist. He had an emergency near the end of the day that caused us to get a couple hours late start. And he was just exhausted when we started recording. But he did a tremendous job. And, and others who closed down their practices in order to be able to do these videos. And it was just a, a wonderful thing to see that these practitioners wanted to get the word out to CMDA members. Challenges, obstacles uh, over this last year as you've been trying to put this together? The biggest single challenge is the fact that these videos are only 15 minutes long. We've had to edit out a lot of great material, and it's been a real challenge to figure out what portions of what these speakers have said are most critical to get into the minds of our, our CMDA group. I think probably the reason that I, as the new CEO on the block, am so excited about this is because when at the same time this was released in 94, 95, after Dave Stevens and Gene Rudd came on board to run CMDA, and I saw this being advertised, I'm like, yes, mm -hmm. yes, this is, this is what we've been waiting for. I mean, Griff, I went through medical school and through residency. I never had an attending or a resident 
ever show me how to, that you could pray with patients. It was so segregated. There was no concept that you could do this. That was chaplain's work, or maybe you didn't even think about it at all. And I was in the Bible Belt of the United States, and yet it was not being demonstrated. And so these courses and now faith prescriptions, I'm really hoping, I know you do too, that we can sh- demonstrate to medical students as early as their first few months in medical school that spiritual ministry is acceptable and backed by literature, right? Yes, most definitely. Shortly after the saline solution, I guess it was about the third time I had attended it, I wrote an article for CMDA called The Saline Solution Opened My Eyes. Mm. And that's true in more than one respect. One way that I really didn't anticipate is it caused me to see that God was already at work within my practice in ways I wasn't recognizing. For example, when I take a tooth out and I put some gauze in and I have the patient bite down, it's not me that stops the bleeding. It's not the gauze that stops the bleeding. It's God who stops the bleeding. And, and we, in fact, know that there are certain clotting factors that work together, but it's evidence of human fallenness that when we begin to understand something, we want to take credit for it. And in fact, God deserves the glory when medical care goes well. And so my eyes were open more widely to how God is at work in healthcare in everyday situations with patients. And then secondly, as I more saw God's glory in healthcare, this gave me the capacity to verbalize it in ways that, as as I said, were non-threatening and very interactive with patients. So Griff, we're planning on rolling this out and uh, uh, revealing uh, at least the first 10 modules for the National Convention at the end of April. Tell us what that's gonna look like at the National Convention. Yes, it'll be Saturday at one o'clock. And we'll have a session. May 1st, May 1st. Yes, thank you. Saturday, May 1st at 1 o'clock. And we'll have a session where I'll spend just the first few minutes talking about how this faith prescriptions program has come together. And then the really exciting part is whoever is in attendance, I'm going to show those first 10 episodes, a list of those 10 episodes, and allow them to pick one of them. We're going to watch that together. That'll be the first unveiling of the program. And then we're going to split into Zoom discussion groups so we can talk about the discussion questions. So that's where we'll launch whichever particular episode those in attendance most want to see. Wow, great. So I can't remember the last time I put a DVD into a DVD player and watched a DVD. And of course, that's the medium which Grace Prescriptions was produced under. So talk to us about the medium. How will it be accessed in the future? We want it to be on demand, available through the web. So explain that for us. Well, I watched Saline Solution on VHS cassettes. Some of our members may not remember those things, but this will be far more convenient. It'll be a streaming service offered through CMDA's Online Learning Center, and that will allow groups to form so that they can take in this material at whatever rate they're comfortable with. I know that everyone Every one of our members and other constituents, as many people as we can get to view this series, are going to benefit. But who do you think might in particular benefit the most from taking on and participating and watching this video series? Well, on the one hand, I think there are enough varied topics to where everybody can find something that they can really latch on to and apply to wherever they are. But I especially think about the healthcare professional who knows Christ, who knows that Christ is the biggest thing in their life, but feels awkward about communicating the gospel on an everyday basis. It's how do I get it out? And I think it can be a very freeing experience for those Christians who want to integrate their faith with their patient encounters on a day-to-day basis. When this is released, certainly whether it's 10, 15, 24 videos or however many, what is your ultimate goal? What would you love to see happen as a result of all of this passion and investment of energy and traveling all over the country during a pandemic? What would you like to see the outcome? Well, we don't have enough time. (laughs) (laughs) A couple of quick ones that come to mind. First of all is I would love for our CMDA members to experience a a greater freedom in providing for our patients truly holistic care. I, I think as an aside, one of the possible causes of burnout for doctors over the long term 
is they realize that if you're just dealing with flesh and blood, if you're just dealing with the physical, ultimately, at least on earth, we lose because all patients die eventually. But it's when we consider spiritual implications, when we consider the eternal manifestations of our treatment, that's when medicine and dentistry become even more exciting. So we're looking to basically provide patients with the comfort that we have received from Christ, as it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. A second thing, though, also is that Participants of faith prescriptions will have a greater awareness that we CMDA members are not alone in this pursuit. It'll be a, a vibrant reminder that God has many people across the nation seeking to communicate the gospel to patients. And when you refer one of your patients to another specialist for additional care or whatever, it might very well be that they will piggyback on your efforts and that through the joint effort of God's medical team that a patient could indeed come to Christ. So we're, we're not alone. And I pray that as this has been a great encouragement to me, that the viewers of Faith Prescriptions will be greatly encouraged also as they look left and right at other Christian doctors. What is the difference in trying to apply these principles, this training series in terms of a practice of someone who's taking care of patients, whether it's in dentistry, as you did, or in a physician in medical practice, challenges are greater, you think? I'll mention a negative and a positive if I could. Mm -hmm. The negative that comes to mind is we might not feel as supported by the general society which has become increasingly secular. We might wonder at times whether or not what we're doing is okay. And by the way, this series addresses that point beautifully in episode number two. Mm. But secondly, I believe that the hunger that patients have for truth in the spiritual realm, in contrast to our increasingly secular society, will stand out more. In other words, what we have to offer our patients as Christians who believe that Christ really is who he claimed to be, what we have to offer in the love of Christ will stand out more in contrast to so many who don't have that ultimate meaning and purpose in life. Well, Griff, we've run out of time. Thanks for joining me today on CMDA Matters. Thank you, Mike. It's been a privilege. I believe that our Faith Prescriptions faculty will remind you that you can start a conversation about Christ with patients in your practice through the use of what we call faith flags. I invite you to check out the CMDA bookstore online as we have a variety of physician or dentist office decor items that are sure to catch the attention of your patients. From skillfully painted images to a framed Christian Healthcare Professionals Oath Plaque. These attractive but meaningful items remind patients who is truly responsible for their healing and what you as a follower of Christ believe as you care for them. Since Dr. Griffin, a successful Christian dentist over several decades joined me today, I wanted to tell you about Dr. William Forbes and Dr. Richard Topazian's book entitled Spiritual Issues and Choices in Dentistry. These two veteran dentists answer questions like, how is the Christian faith best incorporated into the dental school experience and then dental practice? And how does it impact one's professional and personal choices? Many dental professionals wonder about such matters and especially the effect that a demanding dental practice has on their personal life and their marriage. These essays are direct and written from the perspective of the dentist utilizing biblical guidelines as the authority for their decisions. You can get your copy at cmda.org store or by calling 888-230-2637 today.
Well, our long-awaited CMDA Virtual National Convention begins next week. Thursday, April 29th through Saturday, May 1st, will be a weekend packed full of inspiring speakers, encouragement, and fellowship with other believers in healthcare. I'll be kicking off the convention on Thursday evening, April 29th, asking you to consider the clarion call of God. And we will be joined by returning musician, songwriter, and vocal artist, Mr. Ryan Kennedy, to lead us in worship music. Our other guest speakers will include an interview with Dr. Alveda C. King, niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We'll be joined by best-selling author Philip Yancey. He'll be with us on Friday, April the 30th. Dr. Albert Moeller will be challenging us on Saturday morning, May 1st. And Reverend and author Pastor Burt Jones will be sharing from God's Word on both Friday and Saturday mornings. There will also be several breakout sessions available and time for your questions and fellowship live. You don't want to miss this. We are actually approaching 600 people already registered, and we would love to reach 800 or more in the next week. For a complete schedule or to register, just go to cmda.org slash events or click the link in our show notes today. I have found that traveling can be some of the best education you can get. If you are interested in gaining a deeper knowledge of the Bible and enjoying a time of encouragement and fellowship with other believers, I would like you to consider signing up for our Turkey tour. Turkey is where the Apostle Paul devoted a significant amount of his ministry as a missionary. Turkey was also the sphere of ministry for the uncompromising Apostle and beloved John. Turkey combines Old and New Testaments in a very unique way, and I have no doubt that you will come away with a deeper knowledge of the Bible and renewal of your faith. Join us as we visit these sites and trace the history of the earliest church. You can find out more information about our upcoming tour of Turkey and register for these events or other tours that we have available at cmda.org slash events, or you can find again links in our show notes today. Well, as I come down the home stretch at CMDA Matters, we so appreciate our members without whose support this ministry could not exist and thrive. So we have come up with a new way to say thank you to those of you listening who also feel led to help CMDA financially. Through the end of April, when you make a donation of any amount to CMDA, we will send you a copy of a former CMDA Matters guest, Grove City College professor, Dr. Carl Truman's top of the charts new book, The Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self. Just click our link in the show notes or go to cmda.org slash rise and triumph, one word, rise and triumph, to receive your copy today. As members of CMDA, we desperately want you to care about the integration of your faith with your healthcare practice so that every day you can bring glory to Almighty God. Paul told the Colossians in chapter 3, let the message about Christ in all of its richness fill your lives. I think it's the number one reason that every Christian healthcare professional should be a member of CMDA. And you can be sure that it will continue to matter to CMDA and CMDA matters. Well, please join us next week for my featured guest, Dr. Joseph Zanga. As a past president of the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American College of Pediatricians, Dr. Zanga will tell us just how much adverse childhood events, or ACEs, can affect our health as adults. I want to thank you for listening today. We will see you next week, unless our Father in Heaven decides between now and then that the time has come. God bless you today, big time.
This podcast has been a production of the Christian Medical and Dental Associations. The opinions expressed by guests on this podcast are not necessarily endorsed by the Christian Medical and Dental Associations. CMDA is a nonpartisan organization that does not endorse political parties or candidates for public office. The views expressed on this podcast reflect judgments regarding principles and values held by CMDA and its members and are not intended to imply endorsement of any political party or candidate.